Friends, you and I have talked classic cars over many episodes, and I've asked you if you want this man to join us, the man that literally writes the book on classic cars and is 49% responsible for this show because he is a mentor at life, not just in classic cars. Welcome, Dave Kinney. Welcome, Moto Man. Good to see you. Now, we are doing this where? In my garage. This is the first time ever you and I are shooting at your hood. Uh, and I want you to say this is what we call a working garage. Uh, it no is. one has ever described this as the garage mahal. Um, it's we better do, than mine. We do stuff here as opposed to have stuff done somewhere else. So <laughs> not that I do a lot of my own work, but there's a lot of polishing that goes on. There's a lot of fluid changes, all that sort of stuff. So no, it's not you know carpeted and there's no oriental rugs and there's no this and there's no that. It's just a garage. Well, being that I have a one-car garage... It's bigger. You got me beat. Yeah, I know. Yes. I know. Although, bigger. we have a problem with the Avantis, but that's a, that's a discussion for no, another day. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Fun fact, actually, I, I have to say it. I gotta say it. Okay. You know what I'm gonna say. There are many people that have, like, memory problems. He is the only person on planet Earth that has lost an entire car. Don't believe me. Google lost Avanti New York Times Dave Kinney. And you will see that this is entirely a true story. It's actually a fun story, too. It's so a fun story. It has a, it has a happy ending. It, it, right it's there. right here. Right there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But only Dave Kinney would do this. So we are here today mm -hmm. to talk to the guru. And I wanted to get some advice yeah. on classic cars that are modern. Okay. So what I want to do today is I want to go through a list of classic cars, really modern day classics, from 2000 and forward. Okay. And you have compiled the list. I have. And you are the man that wrote the book. So how about we start with your list? First off is a 2000 Mustang Cobra R. Oh, I think that's a no-brainer. That's a good one. Okay, 300 built. Are you serious? 300, yeah. Uh, Google that. <laughs> <laughs> and you can still buy one kind of 50 grand-ish. I mean, with low miles and everything yeah. else. Not a race car. Not a raced car. It is a race car. No air conditioning, no back seat. You know, they took all the radio stuff and all that. They threw it away. This was a race car for the street. So this is important. And I want, I want you to recap something to the sure. audience that I learned from you. Mm -hmm. What goes in to making or creating the value of a classic car? You gave me a couple of attributes, like how many of them were built, but there's some other things that apply to this car. You know, how many of them are built is kind of far down the list. Yeah. The impact it made when it was brand new. Mm -hmm. Who bought the cars when they were brand new? Were they bought by people who... You know, famous people or were they bought by celebrities, all that sort of stuff. That can make a difference. But really, not just the impact it made, but the impact it continues to make. So, you know, the joke is about the poster on the wall. The 15, 16, 17-year-old kid has, a, you know, has a, a, a 2000 Mustang Cobra R on the wall. Well, that kind of actually happened. Those were cars that were always kind of hard to find, always kind of, you know, just a few steps away. I think these things are going to go crazy in the next five, ten years. I think they're going to be a hundred thousand dollar car before we know it. I got to ask. Mm -hmm. My favorite of that genre mm -hmm. of car is the, and it's the generation before. It is the Seven Up car. Yeah, that's. Do cool. they that's have cool any stuff. collector value? Yeah, they do. But I mean, you know, really, you're driving around in a Seven Up colored car. Okay. That's what I like about it. Uh, well, okay, get your caffeine somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, it's 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 okay. I mean, they're fun. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, they're, it's such a different car than the Cobra R. Just completely, you know, the only thing they have in common is they're Ford Mustangs. And is there any value? I've got a lot of friends that are doing this as of late. Two friends. Oh, like, whoa, whoa. you have a lot of friends? Shockingly, I know. Okay. Unbelievable. I know, my life is changing. I, I have know. a garage. I ran out of yeah. money, so I can't buy as many friends anymore. <laughs> so, I, you know. so I have two friends. I don't have a lot of friends, but I have two friends. Both of them have made heater, uh, Fox body, notchbacks. Mm -hmm. Is there any value in those? It's really basically what you're going to find is over time, it's the way they came from the factory makes, yeah. makes a big difference. Now, there's always going to be people who do you know, all kinds of modifications. And believe it or not, those cars are going to be resto modded before we know it. You know, well, people, they already are. Those two well, cars. No, you know one of them. It's Pacioni's car. Yeah, okay. But what I'm saying is that you're, you're going to see more and more of them resto modded. I mean, you see them now, but that's going to be continuous. But throughout time, with some very, very rare kind of one-off exceptions, mm -hmm. it's the way they were delivered from the factory is the way collectors... So that them. still applies. Absolutely. So going back to your original suggestion of the Cobra R, it was rare. Mm -hmm. It was... Fast. It so it had an impact when it was new. Right. Because there were very few cars that could do that. 2,000. 
uh, you know, I mean, this is not 2010. Think yeah. of what happened in those 10 years. Everything's a, a fast car now. But in 2000, yeah, I mean, we're climbing up through the 90s. But this was a real, and not sanctioned, of course. But, you know, look, the air conditioning's gone. The radio's gone. The back seat's gone. Gee, did you do that because you were going to deliver groceries in the car? I don't think <laughs> yeah. so. Save money so you could donate more money to church. That's, that's why. exactly right. And that's what I do, yes. yes absolutely. Uh, As is, you should. Is there value, you mentioned something about the poster on the wall. Is there value to a car? Does that add value to a car if people, when we were young, we put the poster on the wall? And you have a lot of posters on the wall here. Yeah. When you're 15, 16, 17, you can't afford any car. I mean, you know, maybe daddy can afford but a car But if for you. many teenagers put that car on their wall, does that, have you seen a trend? Oh, absolutely. Because that, I know the Countach, yeah, it's not a valuable car. But that's what they're working for. The Countach is not a non-valuable car, that's for well, sure. Well, they were very unvaluable to, compared to what they are today. Eh, they've gone up, they've gone down, they've gone yeah. back down again, but I mean, they've gone up and they've gone down. You know, they're a roller coaster. Yeah. But the special ones, the Periscopal cars, the early cars, yeah. are, you know, they're a fortune. Yeah. million dollar cars again Amazing to me. yeah it all applies but what happens is when you become 35 or 45 or 50 and you have the money to buy the car a lot of the times it's still on the must-have list and you mm -hmm. go out and grab it and i think that's one of the reasons why okay. i mean we all want to have a better childhood than we did right <laughs> so that's the way yeah. we go back and make our childhood better absolutely right for some reason i still want to triumph stag i was pretty sure i was a uh, star quarterback i'm pretty sure i was but there's no records of it <laughs> yeah and actually, a little fun fact, while we're in his garage, speaking of his teenage years, that butterscotch Cougar XR7 back mm -hmm. there, that was from your teenage years. Uh, my mom bought it, uh, well, it would be uh, just out of teenage years. So it's a one-family-owner car? Yeah, my mom bought it new in 73. It was a demonstrator. It was the last one she could find. She wanted a convertible. Convertibles were kind of going by the wayside then. So let's move on to your next list, your mm -hmm. next, which is an odd choice, this next choice. Lamborghini Gallardo. Really? Well, this is not for you and me. This is for guys with a lot of money. There are a lot of people who wanted a If Gerardo I had a ton of dough, I wouldn't buy that. I know. It's not the car for me either. Hey, I can't even fit in the car. Okay. okay. But uh, I, I see the appreciation. We see the attention that's coming down the line. Now, for that's those. an important note. Explain to them when you say you see the appreciation, you see more things than most people. What are you seeing? Well, we're tracking it at Haggerty. So we can tell, you know, when people go online and they take a look at different cars, you know, we can tell what they're looking at. So we know before it actually happens. So you're a big brother. Secret sauce. <laughs> no, no, no. If you go online and you, you know, are checking out things at Hegarty and you, you know, type in Lamborghini Gallardo, we can tell how many people did that this year versus last year versus the year before. And trust me, the numbers are going up. That's fascinating. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of the things that we can find out. So, you know, you can totally skew it if you go in and go for, you know, seven up. Mustangs, you know, and all of a sudden I'll be the next. But uh, in so the maybe meantime, I'll like pay for a click farm to start searching for those. Uh, it would be very nice. Yeah. You. I'm sure everybody would appreciate <laughs> it. So. so now, why is this car going? Where is it? Where did it come from? And where is it going to? Uh, you know, they were used cars, and they're going to classic cars. And there's no stop in the middle for a lot of cars right now. They were built from 2003 to 2013, so they're relatively recently out of production. Uh, you know, there's an argument for the early cars. It's the same argument always, and the late cars. The same argument is early cars, purity of design, the mm -hmm. way the designer wanted it, the way that they brought it out. The later cars, they fixed all the stuff that was wrong in the early cars, or they made improvements along the way, and is that's there, true here, is too. Is there value for, I believe they made a manual early on in that car and then stopped. Yeah. Um, so for a lot of for cars, there is a lot of value for a manual. I think that's going to decline as time goes on because more and more people are driving automatics. But there'll always be those people who will not have a car unless they can have and a And is there car. value for the special editions like the Balbonis yes. or the two-wheel drive cars? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. there's more value in those. So, I mean, you know, the thing to do with this is this information is something I'd use to track right now. I don't think I'd go out and buy right yeah. now, but I watch and I keep watching and see, you know, how the trend line goes on. Two those. more things on this car. Number one... What's the bottom? Like, what's the cheapest these things are right now? I'm pretty sure you can buy a decent car that you would want for under $100,000. Well, it's that much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they went from they went from 65 to like 95. Oh, much. so they're already, very, their very depreciation's quickly. done. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, you know, 10 years is a long production life. Not so long for a Lamborghini. <laughs> they have, you know, um, for them, they're you know they're they're a, a very small specialist manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So ten years, but it, that's a very long time for a lot of different cars. I mean, they don't stay in production that long. Now here's the wild card. Yeah. Same thing on the Audi, or does the Audi not apply because it's an Audi? 
doesn't apply as much because it's an Audi, although, uh, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with going the Audi route. And See, that's the car I would it. prefer. Yeah, okay. And yeah. I get that. I mean, and, you know, I, like I said, this is not a car I will ever own mm -hmm. unless, you know, somebody, you know, gives me one or, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's just something that we're, you know, we're tracking. And, and Do you so know the numbers offhand of did they make more Lamborghinis or make more Audis? Or? I think the Audi number was higher, but that I'd have to Interesting. check. Interesting. I'd be, I'd you know what, check. I think we should look back into that and yeah, see, okay. find out. Because I, I feel like it's almost like your Bentley. Bent, uh, I don't know if you've seen this episode first or the Bentley episode first, but we drove his Continental convertible from 85. Right. They only made 401 of yours and they made a couple thousand of the Corniche. Right. I think there may be a situation here between these two, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, let's put it really nicely. You can get away from, with driving an Audi to work because you're the guy who drives the Audi. <laughs> but if you're not the president of the company and you're driving a Lamborghini, especially if you're in the accounting department, yeah. there's going to be questions asked. Yeah. Even though, you know, same bones. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So just, just say it. Yeah. Okay? So next choice. I'm going to have to go with kind of another surprising one, Firebird Firehawk SLPs, all of them. Thank God you mm -hmm. added a Pontiac to that list. You You're know right. I'm a freak about yeah, this. I know. I know. Now, did you add it because of me or because Absolutely it's the truth? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, you know, you can buy these cars just dirt cheap. What's dirt cheap? Dirt cheap. Under twenty-five thousand. Wow. The ones you want are probably going to be over twenty-five thousand. You can find a ten-thousand-mile one. You know, for thirty-five on up, basically. Colors make a big difference. Uh, you want the color with impact mostly. I don't think a sky blue one is ever going to be. But that car had a lot of power to it as well. Absolutely. I don't know the horsepower off my you know top of my head, but you know, three forty five or something. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's right. And we went, uh, we went. You know, okay, the nose is challenging. It okay, is. some people just don't like it. I get that. Mm -hmm. If you really hate it, you could all. There's SLP Camaros that you could slide into mm -hmm. if you want to as well. These were cars that were basically pulled off the line, taken to SLP, and made into real live sports cars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know how long this era is going to last. I mean, we're living in an automotive renaissance right wow. now. Right now. Everything gets better. Um, but we have lived, I especially have lived through the end of the 1960s into the 1970s, mm -hmm. where everything kind of went bad. So, I mean, this could happen again. Uh, but right now, um, I, you know, I just think you can't go wrong with the uh, with the Firebird, uh, the Firehawk Firebird SLP. I mean, I just, is there any value to the standard Firehawk? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. two, they had a manual. Look, and yeah, was... I, yeah, three pedals, very yeah. important. I still say that's very important on this car. Get the manual if you can. But wouldn't it be fun to have a manual uh, coupe? and a convertible and automatic. That would be pretty, well, I'm not with you on the automatic, but I love the idea of the No, coupe. no, I yeah. mean, you, you're, it's hard to find them all. In, Did in, they do in, the SLPs with a T-top? Yes. Oh, yeah. see, that would be the one I would do. So you'd get the one that would leak, uh, you know. Absolutely. Uh, the one that would leak more than the convertible. Because I am a British car guy. There you I go. want my British I, I get that. with my American car. I like that. Absolutely. That'll work fine. So uh, a little aside to this, is there any value? Remember the GTA Firebird, the one that they put the Buick engine in? Mm -hmm. And that was, what, 1989? Mm-hmm. Any value to those? We're not talking about 89 cars. Oh, We're yeah, that's another episode. Cars. Remind yeah. me to bring it up another episode. Okay, we'll Okay, do. We're not talking about All it. Right. Let's move on to the next topic. Mazda RX-8. Thank God you put a Mazda in this. Although I don't love the RX-8. I'm an RX-7 guy, but I don't like the RX-8. Well, we can, you know, through the magic of time, go back to the episode before 2000s. <laughs> yeah. We're going to uh, do that. Okay, fine. Um, RX-8, once again, you know, it's got some challenges. It's not the prettiest car ever. And it's approved. not the fastest car. Anymore. And it's not the fastest car, but it is different and fun. Is it um, done depreciating? Yeah, yeah. They're pretty well done depreciating. Now, okay, the 68,000-mile seven-owner car, yeah, it's going to depreciate some more. Okay. And it's going to be the parts for your, you know, when it hits 145 and the seals all blow and, you yeah. know, whatever, it's going to be the parts for your 22,000 mile one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, no, the good ones are, are being grabbed by collectors now and just starting, but that's that's already happening. Fascinating. Obviously all the stuff, all as applies with the Mazda, rotary power, a little bit different. They do have problem with seals. Um, the gas mileage uh, will remind you of driving a Freightliner uh, <laughs> or does. a Peterbilt, something yes. along those lines. Um, you're not buying it for gas mileage, but uh, um, you know, again, uh, it's a, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a, uh, let's call it a bank shot in the, in the, uh, okay. in the cars that I have here. Um, but uh, you know, very good reasons to own these cars. Uh, mm -hmm. They're so different. 
we'll probably never see anyone else other than Mazda if they do it again with another rotary mm -hmm. engine. No one's going to go into production with a rotary engine anymore, I don't mm -hmm. think. So it becomes more fun that way when you, you win a bar bet and say, how many cylinders does this car have? And you win. <laughs> this is a dark man here, so. There you go. What's the dark choice? Uh, the dark choice, definitely. I have to get ready for this one because you might not like this. I know what it is. It's not a car. It's not a car. Not a car. But I also love the people behind it. I don't love the vehicle, but I love the people behind it. Okay. Let's say you took a one body style only, just a regular cab pickup. No super cab, no sport cab, no nothing, or, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, crew cab. Um, and you put a manual transmission in, and then you drop the V10 Viper engine in it. See, on paper, that sounds wonderful. It is. It is. 2005 is my favorite year. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a SRT 10. How many years Dodge did they truck. make it? I think they made it two years. And okay. once again, I'm just, you know, riffing on this. So drop a Viper motor in a pickup truck. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> once again, you, I found one just the other day for uh, uh, 35,000 bucks with 10,000 miles in black. Paperwork on all these cars is important. Make sure you get the right paperwork, yeah. all, do all the research. Get the one that's 10,000 miles if you can, because you're going to have a lot of fun in the next 20,000 miles. Yeah. And after that, um, you know, you're getting into the just a truck thing. Mm -hmm. But if your budget is 25 grand, you can get them all day long with, uh, you know, 32, 42, 52,000 miles. That's amazing. A lot of truck for the money. That's a, forget about truck. That's a lot of power. A lot of chair for the money. Yeah, exactly. And it, so it's done depreciating as well. Yes. Three Completely seats, done. by the way. I mean, it's got the middle oh, seat. Oh, so you take your best girl out If you want to be uncomfortable, you can do that all And you know time. what? You know me. I love my country, and I got my Stetson. There you so go. So I just get some shit kickers and get one of those things. Can you say that word? I can say that word. Kicker. Okay, great. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> okay. So these are your choices. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure there are others. Oh, yeah. Yes. So what I think we should do is I think we should leave a question for the audience. Okay. And let them throw some suggestions for this, this area. Absolutely. Now, the parameters are this. It's a car that is done depreciating vehicle vehicle done, yeah. so vehicle not a car yeah so a vehicle that is done depreciating that they think is a classic car mm -hmm. or going to be a classic mm -hmm. but it has to be 2000 and newer right exactly so give us your choice there's a lot of choices there's a lot of choices too. because there's you didn't cover choices. everything oh yeah i you know we didn't even talk about the ford gt that's i mean that's the obvious it's one, a no-brainer yeah. yeah but i mean we go from the no-brainers down to the you know, uh, or like LaFerraris, it's ridiculous. Of, of yeah. course, yeah. Z8 BMW. See, I, your favorite person and mine, uh, uh, I don't know if they know this guy, we won't call him by name. Right. I remember an editorial in his magazine saying they will never be collector cars, never. There's a long list of cars that were that way. So, yeah. Yeah. And I don't believe that. I don't think that they will no. be million dollar cars like a 507, mm -hmm. but I do think that they will more than keep pace with inflation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because they were special. They were special. Uh, they were a tribute car. I mean, yeah. I know that manufacturers don't want to use that kind of language and all that yeah. sort of stuff. I, let's call it throwback. Yeah. Um, and a modern version, in some ways, of a uh, of a classic car. What's wrong with that? I mean, that's that's just fine. So. And that uh, one was more than a tribute. That actually was a beautiful right. interpretation. Right. Unlike the Thunderbird, which was a bastard. I didn't like. It was cool to look at, but it didn't sell to any new people. I thought it sold to just the people who bought Thunderbirds at Barrett Jackson. No, well, it could be. I, yeah, I kind of like those cars. Yeah. Um, well, then again, you have a butterscotch car back there as well. Well, I mean, yeah. I've got a lot of stuff in my closet. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, including Avantis. Okay, so the question is very simple. It's got to be a 2000 vehicle, not a car. So it can be a car, it can be a truck, or a motorcycle. Actually, forget about it. It'd be too long a list. Forget motorcycles. Vehicle. 2000 and newer, done depreciating, do they think it's a classic or going to be a classic? Most importantly, give me the why. And for good measure, let us know what region of the world you hail from. Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, please unsubscribe and then resubscribe, click notifications. Do you know? how badly YouTube has screwed up the platform. Actually, you do. I have heard. I have yes. heard, yeah. yeah. You have heard this. So yeah. that's why they have to unsubscribe. Unsubscribe and then resubscribe. And then click notification. And also have your grandmother subscribe. Oh, and absolutely. your grandmother's mother and your great-great-grandmother's mother. Oh, you're going to love this. What's that? And actually, this is a bonus fun fact. <laughs> I made my girlfriend's grandmother subscribe. I know you would. <laughs> uh, has the dog subscribed yet? 
Uh, Kumo does not know. He does not have his own phone. Mm -hmm. But Grandma not only subscribed, she also has downloaded the app on her phone. She has an iPhone. Excellent. Yes. Until we see you next time, bis später. Uh, whatever. Oh, Rule of Britannia. Yeah, well, no. Oh, what do you I'm say, gonna... Rule of Avanti? Uh, no, I'm going to say Avanti rules. How's that? <laughs> okay. Whatever. Goodbye.